The Chicago Bears have been making moves in the offseason, and that is all to help out whoever they choose at pick number one. Two Heisman Trophy winners here to support. And let's try to hit 2,000 likes on today's video, and if that happens, I'll be dropping a 20-year rebuild in the upcoming weeks, so let's try to smash that goal, and it's also the best way to show me that you guys enjoy the content and helps out the channel, helps out the videos a ton, so that would truly mean the world if you do. And hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, scroll down, subscribe to the channel, because with the offseason moves, and especially the draft coming up, you do not want to miss out the content that is going to come out so go ahead and join the train subscribe and i think that's everything so um enjoy let's of course start off at quarterback where we got we got um who you can call me daddy young man. <laughs> yes sir of course the new rb1 here is deandre swift who i think is good and it was a fine deal in my opinion but that Eagles online makes anybody look good. We saw it the year prior with Miles Sanders, of course, who got himself paid by the Panthers and is now their RB2 behind Chuba Hubbard. Overall, I do still think Swift is better than Miles Sanders, though he's got more burst to him too, so um, hopefully he thrives here in Chicago. Also got Khalil Herbert, Roshan Johnson behind him too. It's a decent RB room. But would you look at who is now the wide receiver one? Keenan Allen was traded from the Chargers, of course, for just a fourth round pick of course he is 32 though didn't want to restructure his contract with the chargers of course because he just came off his best ever season put up monster numbers but more importantly stayed injury free which has been the big problem in keenan allen's career now he's 32 but um for just a fourth round pick i mean how can you not like that then of course alongside him you still got dj moore here who became a bear around this time last season after they fleeced the panthers who you could argue just had his best ever season too and he's more than good enough to be a number one and the fact that he's alongside keenan allen now is um scary hours whose morale is a little low though because justin fields was one of his good friends and a big reason why he wanted to come to chicago and with him now gone i mean eh, business is business as for the wide receiver number three we could use an upgrade tyler scott's a good deep threat but i don't know if he's good enough to be the three like dante pettis no and then vegas jones is like a big Kadarius tony however at tight end cole Komet is coming off a really good year he has developed himself into a big red zone threat nowadays 98 catching too which is ridiculous is he a top 10 tight end in the league let me know in the comments offensive line and now they've always had a dysfunctional unit but low-key I don't think it's that bad of a unit here. Braxton Jones, I think, is a fine left tackle. They found him in the later gems of the draft, if that made sense. Tevin Jenkins, I think, is their best overall lineman when he's on the field, though. Injuries have been a problem. Nate Davis and Ryan Bates, who they just signed. Maybe we can upgrade on these two positions, but Darnell Wright, the rookie right tackle, was pretty good, if I say so myself. Although it is pain, Bears legend Cody Whitehair is now gone. Now, defensively, and after the addition of Montez Sweat, this side of the ball really started to find their stride. They gave up a second-round pick to the Commanders for Montez Sweat, and he came in right away and made a huge impact led their team in sacks and the commanders <laughs> like what he led two teams in sacks that is pretty much unheard of they did give him a pretty big contract but honestly i think it's worth it jervon dexter i also want to show some love to i think he came in as a rookie and made a good impact right away nah and also you know what yeah i don't care sue me but now to probably the best offensive player on this team that is the standout corner, Jalen Johnson, who went up to superstar in my simulation and honestly, he deserves it. Because he's coming off a spectacular season which granted the Bears giving him a 4 year $76 million deal that I have put in here. And there are a lot of really good corners in this league but honestly Jalen Johnson I think is right on the brink of getting into that elite tier. I'd love to know where you guys rank Jalen Johnson in terms of cornerbacks in the league though, leave a comment down below. And now we also got another upgrade for our cornerback too, Tyreek Stevens. Thank you to the Madden Gods for this one too. Who I think as a rookie was pretty underrated and it's difficult playing alongside a guy like Jalen Johnson as a rookie because everybody's going to be targeting you right but honestly I think he held his own as the entire cornerback room is honestly pretty good and young Kyler Gordon I think was solid too and Terrell Smith another rookie same thing goes for Jaquan Brisker another player I honestly enjoy watching quite a bit but after losing Eddie Jackson to free agency they did manage to grab themselves Kevin Byard as I believe it was just a two-year 15 million dollar deal so nothing really too crazy as Byard has been one of the most consistent and top end safeties of the past few seasons now he is 31 wasn't really too great when he got traded to the Eagles last season, of course, but he does provide us with some stability and more importantly, some experience into this DB room. And the linebacker room, hey, I kind of like it, right? Jack Sanborn has been great value for a later round pick. TJ Edwards and Tremaine Edmonds, the duel that signed to them last season, I thought were actually pretty good. And they even got my boy, um, Og... Og... Um... Amen Ogabaga Uga Booga Uga Booga Booga! As the team as a whole is most certainly on a trend upwards, right? And this is going to be one of, if not the best situations we have ever seen for a number one overall pick quarterback to come into because he's got great weapons. He's got a good defense too. The O-line isn't half bad. Caleb Williams, the keys really are yours because of course they did trade away Justin Fields for just a 2025 six round pick. And I know the fans and the team and all the players here loved Justin and the things he did for the city. But um, I'll leave you off with one last highlight of him in a Bears uni. 
And as always, we do have the updated roster, so the Browns have Jameis Winston. The Vikings have their new QB1 in Sam Darnold. <laughs> and the Panthers have their big money man, Robert Hunt. And as a Dolphins fan, you will never be forgotten. And if you want to know how I got here with the updated rosters, the realistic records, and draft orders, check out the new short I made on the screen right now or somewhere. The description, out. It'll, it'll be somewhere. <laughs> Ooh, and Harrison Smith retired. Good. Bears legend Trevor Seaman, dude. And Riley Reed. Or Reef, my bad. I don't know where I got Reed from. <laughs> For contracts, we actually only have two people here. Bright Ripian and <laughs> my boy Ooga Booga Booga. <laughs> Now, free agency, not much going on here because the rosters are updated, but I'm just going to go in for Connor Williams here. Contract reviewed, and there's more teams in for him now in the Jets and the Titans. We are not in the hunt? How? Bumped up the salary to seven and the bonus to six. That's honestly quite a bit, but I'm going to do it. I would love Connor Williams. We're still not in. And all right, Connor Williams, not only did you snake me here on the Bears, but you snaked my Dolphins by going to the Jets, too. I, I put in an offer for Carl Lawson, too, and he went to the Vikings, man. I, I, I guess I'll just go kill. Private workouts, and we do have quarterbacks already scouted. Caleb Williams... Maybe my pick may be my pick, or do I go Drake May? Of course, out of North Carolina, and the Bears got a good track record with that score, right? What intrigues me more, though, is what we end up doing at pick number nine if Rome is there, if Malik is there. I wouldn't hate that at all. We most certainly could use another edge, though, alongside Montez Sweat, Jared Verse. Ooh, and on our big board, Jerzon Newton moved down 34 spots for whatever reason. If we can get him in the later rounds, that would be an absolute steal. Also, rate my coach name out of 10, please. Traded Fields just in time. You get it? Here, on your contract. Let's go ahead and kick off the 2024 NFL Draft where we have pick number one. As well as pick number nine. We don't have a second though because that went to the Commanders for Montez Sweat, but we do have a third round pick and then the Eagles fourth, I think. Because remember, our fourth round pick went to the Chargers. And let's just get things rolling. Caleb Williams is of course going to be our pick here at number one. But I do have a checklist of things I want him to complete in this rebuild. First and foremost, win us a Super Bowl. That would be nice, bring a Lombardi to Chicago. Some individual accolades would be fun too. A regular season MVP, a Super Bowl MVP, and a best quarterback award. And hell, I'd love Rookie of the Year too, but we only have one chance to do that, and I don't really know how it's going to go. <laughs> but what about some fun ones? If you don't know, the Chicago Bears have never had a quarterback throw for over 4,000 yards, which is just ridiculous. So um, it's a simple goal, but Caleb... Can you please do that for us? Also, I'm going to hop in to watch, of course, as we do every single video, but I'm going to have to hop in and score one passing touchdown and one rushing touchdown with Caleb Williams. And last but not least, but maybe the most simple one of them all is I want Caleb Williams to break the Bears rookie records for quarterbacks, which is just 196 completions, 2,193 yards, and 11 passing touchdowns. So, um, <laughs> I hope you can do that, Caleb. <laughs> And with all that out of the way, we'll keep that checklist on the side. Anytime you complete something, we'll go ahead and check it off. Let's go ahead and take the main man out of USC at number one to be the new franchise quarterback of the Chicago Bears. He's coming into a great situation. Can he live up to the hype? And now let's go ahead and sim to our pick at number nine because I am intrigued to see who's going to go here. Olu Fashanu goes number two. Weirdly, the draft order is a little scuffed because I'm the one that had to um, force win every single thing. So like tiebreakers and stuff like that. Joel Alt goes three, huh? Why is Fatanu going four? What in the world? That's just Madden for you. Okay, four linemen in a row here is just classic Madden. Marvin, Rome, Malik Neighbors, all three of them guys are still on the board here. There goes JC Latham. The Giants go Jared Verse, which is who I wanted. The Jets go Brock Bowers, and um, are you smelling what I'm cooking? And yeah, Marvin Harrison is still here. And as much as I would love to go him, and this was a real possibility, like in the middle of this season, I'm not going to do it because he's not going to be here at nine. It's that simple. I like to keep things semi-realistic around here for these rebuilds. If there was a slim chance he'd be here at nine, I would, but um... There's pretty much 0%. <laughs> as I'm just not sure why these guys have not gone off the board yet as a top five projection. You're telling me the Giants still have Daniel Jones, the Patriots have Jacoby Brissett, and the Commanders, I don't even know who the Commanders QB is. <laughs> Ooh, I'm not gonna lie, Liatu Latu randomly fell 42 spots here on the draft board and he's now a round two to three projection? What is going on with this draft board? Everybody's just falling like crazy. But as enticing as Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze are, the fact we don't have a second round pick kind of scares me a little bit, so I might trade back and try to get as many picks as possible because this draft class is absolutely loaded from top to bottom so no doubt we're going to be able to find good talents even in the second round maybe even the third round too so let's try to find the best deal here maybe a team like the cowboys is there a chance i can grab 24 56 and maybe like a future third as we will be moving down 15 spots but i honestly think that's fine with the other picks there too 
and the trade is accepted. We move back to number 24 here, but get all the other draft capital too. I think it's a wise move. And although the neighbors and the Adunzes of the worlds would be amazing at pick nine, I think the more draft capital we have, it's going to be vital for us in the future of this rebuild. As we're now here at pick 24, and look, Brian Thomas is still here. Nate Wiggins, Xavier Worthy, Keon Coleman, Graham Barton, Adonai Mitchell too. Ooh. And with this pick, I'm going to go with Liatu, Law to the Edge out of UCLA. And now I think he's most definitely going to be a round one guy. He's a round one talent for sure. But there are some injury history um, concerns with him as well, which is a realistic reason why he could, I guess, fall out of the first round. But I'm going to go ahead and take him here. We're going to gamble on the upside that we have of him and just give Montez Sweat another partner alongside the defensive line. So Liatu, Law to is the second pick we make in this draft. Him and Caleb Williams. It's going to be scary. Two extremely high value positions too, and we now also have a second round pick to choose. And we still have guys like Jalen Polk, Troy Franklin, Ricky Purcell, Malachi Corley. If you watch my Steelers reboot, he was a demon. And somebody sadly chose Jerzon Newton already. But with this pick, I'm going to go with Troy Franklin out of Oregon, of course. Go Ducks, the deep threat, who stands at 6'3", 187. I feel like would be a great compliment alongside Keenan Allen and especially DJ Moore. And here now in the middle of round two, I think this is great, great value because he was one of the best receivers in the nation last season and there's a chance he falls because of the sheer amount of great prospects in this draft class especially at the wide receiver positions three picks in three pack 12 players or i guess what was once known as the pack 12 troy franklin you are a chicago bear only normal development sadly but the 96 speed with 94 jumping standing at 6-3 he's going to be a great number three option on our team and could potentially take over once keenan allen goes and i'm pick 10 in the third round i'm gonna go with left guard christian mahogany here out of boston college because we could just use some depth on the offensive line especially with guys like uh, ryan bates and nate davis potentially not here for the long term christian mahogany could sit for a year and after that could take the keys his ratings actually look monumental here he looks really good and he's hidden dev i will take that all day 90 strength 80 acceleration 81 jumping not that that really matters but still just 21 years of age he's a little raw right now but like i said we're gonna sit him and uh he's gonna be our main guy for the future cpu the rest is yours as Caleb Williams is going to end up being a 78 overall, still just 21 years of age, of course, with 94 throw power, 93 throw on run. His accuracies all look good, too. Above an 84, he is truly going to change the uh, the trajectory of this Bears franchise. Trajectory. Tractor. Tra 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 I'm also going to change his avatar because I think they all glitched out. Because as you know, this game is kind of stupid. Also, I'm going to change his number because I am not a fan of 1810 is not bad. 5-1. We could do one, which would be tough, but might be a little sensitive for some Bears fan. Let's rock with zero. Let's start a new era. Law to Law to 77 overall. Troy Franklin, 73. Not bad as a number three for us. And Mahogany, 72. He might damn near start right away. As here is the full squad for the official year one. Let's go ahead and make Troy Franklin the number three on our team. Mahogany, I am going to sit. I'm going to stick to my word. And defensively, not much changed over here besides the addition of, of course, Law to Law to, which should play a huge huge impact on this team but for now let's go train some of our boys up and Caleb you're first up Ooh, gold nope DeAndre Swift would you like to go up to superstar x-fact Sko, yeah, last video I got two of them, so I'm never getting one again. To be honest, though, I would love a Jervon Dexter one over anything. I'm crossing my fingers for this one. Oh my god, my god, why do we have so many DBs? Okay, good start. I, I'm getting cooked. Bro, what am I watching? This is supposed to be the easiest one. Why is he so slow? I'm three reps in and I have negative 150 points. Thank you. Oh my God. Can I even get gold? Oh my God. What are you doing? Right, now I'm actually getting mad. I'm spamming why he's just not... Oh my god, Jalen Johnson is... Bro, what? Is Keenan Allen just really good, or is Jalen Johnson just... Sh and Jalen Johnson gets gold first try. And all right, never again. And let's get things started here. Week one in Detroit in Caleb Williams' debut... 
we win 20 to 14. The era is off to a good start. 210 yards, one passing touchdown, zero interceptions, only one sack given up to. As he also had himself 33 yards on the ground as well as a tutty. As his favorite target was the other rookie in Troy, Franklin Keenan Allen, his very first of many touchdowns in the NFL. On the other side though, look who got two sacks on Jared Goff, the other rookie. Layatu Latu also had a tackle for loss. Jalen Johnson, of course, picks him off. And that is how you want to start a season. Let's go to midseason now and see how we are. As Caleb Williams has us at four and three at the midseason mark for second in the north. As we can also go check out some dev traits as Caleb Williams is a superstar development. I honestly thought he was X Factor, but I think a superstar is fine. Layatu Latu also a superstar. This is the first time I've ever chosen him, so I I had no clue. Of course, using Bengals' newly updated draft class, and I've teetered around going loud to lot to in a lot of my rebuilds, but this is the first time I've ever had him. Our scouting focus is going to be on some big old beefy defensive tackles. As Caleb Williams so far has 1,645 yards, nine passing touchdowns, to just three interceptions with a 73% completion rate. Honestly, really good start. Really promising. Player negotiations, we got just about under 70 mil. Keenan Allen is here. Tevin Jenkins. I'd love to bring back Khalil Herbert. Jack Sanborn. Honestly, not the most. For Keenan, I think we wait on because he is 32 now. He's just going to keep going down. Tevin Jenkins doesn't have the most interest. He does value his financials, so I will bump it up a bit. I do want to keep him because he's a great bear in real life, so... He's here to stay for the whole video. Jack Sanborn doesn't want the biggest deal either. I think I'm going to hold out on him. Linebackers are usually easy to draft, so. But okay, at the midseason mark, we are not looking too bad. Week 8 away in San Fran, though. It's going to be a tough game. Probably Caleb's toughest one yet. And we win and have a breakout DB and breakout QB. The breakout DB is going to be for Jaquan Brisker for him to go up to superstar dev. Hold the Texans and Stroud to less than 150 passing yards or get Brisker just two of the defensive stats. That would be big, but of course, Caleb Williams would be even bigger as he needs to have a combined 400 all-purpose yards or four total touchdowns with one or fewer interceptions to go up to superstar X Factor as we have the five and four Texans and we lose 35-28. Gave up a lot of points there, so Jaquan Brisker, to no surprise, didn't get it. By what this press conference is about, it doesn't look like it. As we go 0 for 2 on Devies, that is pain. Week 10, interdivision battle against Minnesota. We win 21-18. My first private workout was gonna go on Jeremy Griffin here at Alabama. Y'all see my man on the right side snoozing after his 12-hour shift. <laughs> This linebacker class looks kind of nutty, Ronald Beal. And last but not least, offensive lineman AJ Massey here out of Clemson. Now the real question is, was Caleb good enough to get us into the playoffs in just year one? And he was. We have the Packers in the wild card. They actually beat us here in week three. I want to see our other matchup when we played him. We lost to him twice to a... <laughs> No real surprise. But the fact that we are here with an 11-6 record, second in the division, I am over the moon. As I'm sure most Bears fans would be as well. Offensive yardage, we were ninth in the league in total. Defensively, how'd we do? Ooh, very bad. However, Caleb Williams has shattered every single rookie quarterback Bears record with his yards. With 4,375, 32 touchdowns, just 10 interceptions, 68% completion rate. Caleb Williams has been as advertised. And tell you what, D Swift enjoyed a pretty good campaign too. 13 touchdowns for him, 4.1 to carry and 1,157. Receiving wise and Kanan Allen was a monster. Oh my God, 1,565 yards in 16 touchdowns? monstrous numbers as he was Caleb Williams' best friend in his rookie season. Troy Franklin, actually our number two here, enjoyed a good rookie season. And DJ Moore, a little quiet than usual. TJ Edwards, Tremaine Edmonds lead the way for tackles made with over 100 there. Javon Dexter, the only man in double digit for TFLs with 16, though he was a monster monster as Montez Sweat with 10 and a half sacks. Lyle to Law to the rookie with nine in just year one, three and a half for TJ Edwards there. As other than those two, not too much, but these two did their freaking part. Tremaine Edmonds, four picks, Jalen Johnson and Kevin Byard with three each and Jaquan Brisker even came in with two but let's go ahead and hop into this game and watch over see how we do in our first ever playoff appearance of course I do have the checklist to get a passing and rushing touchdown but we got time for that so I'm not sure if I'm gonna hop in here honestly if we're getting smoked maybe I'll come in like garbage time and get a Mickey Mouse one <laughs> but let's get things started here in Lambeau and see if we can get the upset of the century the Packers take a 14-0 lead right away second quarter on its way we still don't get a touchdown though only three points however 10-14 getting us a one possession game they get another touchdown down at the end of the half though and we're down by 11 points here we just have no answers for the Packers offense and Jordan Love as a whole however we are driving we're on the 22 here it's still three minutes to go and still all timeouts remaining Caleb Williams we need a quick score and you take a bad sack 
That is not what we wanted to see, leading us to a second and 17. Breaks the tackle there, slides, gets a few yards to be fair. He has 13 rushes for 66 yards. He has been scrambling a ton this game. We need to get a touchdown before the two-minute warning here. Caleb, find the end zone, my boy. Where are you going? Where are you going? I mean, I'm not going to lie. Our offensive line is not doing him any favors either. Fourth and 17 now. We have to get this. And it's an absolute duck of a throw. Caleb is not, is not having a great day at all. Not a good playoff debut, but um, it's just year one. It's a promising start, to say the least. As nobody expected us to be in this position, Jordan Love destroyed us, though. And um, there's one video to describe how Bears fans are feeling right now. However, I'm glad our team and the, all the young players as a whole got their first taste of the playoffs because from now on, we want the whole load. Joe Burrow takes home the 2024 MVP as Offensive Rookie of the Year is going to be Drake May on the Vikings. Really? Not what we wanted to see. Troy Franklin's number six. Let's go check out some Debbie's though, and I'm not gonna lie, I kind of wish I made DJ Moore our number one and in our slot, so he would have got upgraded, of course, and we're gonna have him for a little bit longer than we're gonna have Keenan Allen here. Um, offensively, though, I don't think anybody went up a dev trade. Sadly, of course, Keenan already next factor. He was the one that had the big year defensively. Tremaine Edwards up to superstar X Factor. And Kevin Byard goes up too, which is definitely lovely to see. I think those are the only two we got though on this team. Super Bowl was a classic though. The Niners beat the Ravens 30 to 27. Super Bowl MVP goes to Nick Bosa and he played that game with a little bit more of an edge to him. <laughs> If you know what I'm saying. As we're back at the player contracts here, Keenan is still here, but he is down to an 89 now. Sadly, though, he has little to no interest in rejoining us at all. I'm going to give him a two-year deal. I am going to bump up the money a little bit. I just don't want to let him leave because he's probably going to be the thumbnail and probably the title of this video, too. You know, I don't want just one year, right? Right? Wrong. Honestly, that may have been the better option. I'm just going to tag him then. As for everybody else here, I am going to let them go and let's go to free agency with just about 40 mil. As we got Chase Young, superstar X Factor. Wyatt Teller would be huge. Joel Batonio, I'd love. Jalen Warren as a backup wouldn't be too bad. Gilmore, Ryan Stonehouse. Some good options I feel like we could use. Is it a little odd that Chase Young is two dev traits and like five overalls higher than Montez Sweat? Just saying, it doesn't really make sense. Now, Wyatt Teller would be great. He has like middling interest as well as a lot of offers. But remember last year, we did um, draft Mahogany, who I think I'm going to start this season. So for now, I'm just going to sign Taylor Heineke. <laughs> As well as Jalen Warren to be our backup, Zadari Smith just to provide some depth, and Zach Bond too. We got the money to do it. Caleb is going to be on his rookie contract for pretty much this whole video, so uh, we could go a little crazy. As everybody is gone, but Zach Bond, and we get all three guys welcome to Chicago. Oh, Zach Bond's gone, and we get him too. We go 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Private workouts now, and Ronald Beal looks like the real deal. Let's get him to 100. Sadly, no defensive tackles really look anything too special. As we also now know, Jeremy Griffin is just around 1-2 to two talent. AJ Massey, you know what? I want to know your talent. And I'm going to put my final one on left end, Keelon Davis. Kalon Davis? Him? And remember, we have our first at number 20, and we have two seconds. One being from Carolina from the Bryce Young trade back. DJ Moore, of course. And now we also have an additional third round pick from the Dallas Cowboys trade back from last year. Five picks in the first three rounds. And this draft right here may be the most important of the video. I need to hit here because that's going to be our future. The linebacker is a round one talent. Yeah, no doubt. He's a monster. Ooh, Keelan Davis. We don't have him all the way, but his stats overall look really good. And then the right guard is only round two to three. Oh, all right. Keelan Davis went the pick before me. Are you kidding me? And at pick 20, I'm going to go with Felix Mabry here, the power rusher out of USC. He's 6'4", 271. I'm contemplating moving him inside. He's a power rusher, by the way, with elite acceleration, solid speed as well. Good strength. Not too bad. I think I'm going to move him inside because he has a power moves, which should be good. Hopefully that block shed is pretty high as well and just can beefing up this defensive line as a whole. The offense wasn't the problem last year. It was our 24th ranked defense, of course. So Felix Mabry hopefully can help that out and be the final addition, final puzzle piece to our defensive line with Latu, Sweat, Javon Dexter, and now Mr. Felix Mabry. Our first of two second round picks is going on Sammy Swan, the center out of Notre Dame. When in doubt, go with a Notre Dame offensive lineman. This dude looks like a monster, as you can see with the ratings. Three elite agility, change of direction, and jumping there. And his core attributes as a whole look pretty solid. His lowest one being a C run block power, maybe B to D run block power. 
He's going to come in and be the starting center right away under Caleb Williams is hidden development too. So that is just the cherry on top. At pick 20 here, I'm in two minds. Kevin Middlebrooks and Jimmy Boone, the defensive tackle. Middlebrooks looks quite good. 21 years old, deep throw out of Wazoo. I mean, Keenan Allen is just getting very up there in age now. We could get his replacement right now. He ran a 4-3-7. His core attributes look good. Jimmy Boone, on the other hand, looks like a monster and defensive tackle. Like I said, we know, I know I chose that guy in the first round, but we still could use depth at that position as a whole. It never hurts to stack out the trenches of course i don't know i'm gonna go with kevin middlebrooks the receiver out of wazoo the replacement for um keenan allen of course he can learn behind him right now and dj moore and hopefully get some chemistry with caleb williams early on he's a big deep threat too kevin middlebrooks did i make the wrong decision in drafting him he's well, for one he's normal development and for two he's wearing number 20 at the wide receiver position we are not off to a good start <laughs> Wait, I totally forgot. I was supposed to go the linebacker here. He is still here. He's around three to four. Um, I got to trade up for that guy no matter what. Let me find out where he's going. Okay, he's actually not even on the big board in the top 50. So hopefully I can sim and he's still there. <laughs> he's still here, Ronald Beal. The run-stopping linebacker out of a &M, Just 21 years old, physically elite, good, great, decent, great, and good there all around. Pretty, pretty solid if I say so myself. And his skills blow you out the park especially when you consider it's a round three pick ronald beal ends up being another hidden development with 90 acceleration to him tremaine edmonds tj edwards that is one of the best linebacker rooms in the entire league i'd say roosevelt tompkins what is this 1920 round three pick 28 now and you know what i'm gonna go with the prospect spotlight that we saw earlier i'm just gonna take the game on him and put my faith in our assistant gm is he right or is he fired See you later, assistant GM. See you in everybody. Round five, can we keep the streak alive? I have gone from no hidden development fullbacks in any of my videos to back to back videos. I need to go hit the lottery or something, bro. Hello? That is unheard of. Back to back videos with a hidden development fullback. Mabry's only 73. Sammy Swan's 72. Middlebrook 74. Good overall. And Beal was a 75. We knew that Codwell was a reach. My boy Mike Sloan, 71 overall though. 2025 class as a whole, only 180 overall. And Will Meadows there, Brooks, Tompkins, McCree, and Kirk Kent. Wait, this guy went in the fifth round? The Rams just found the next Puka Nakua? And they have Puka Nakua? The Rams are pretty elite at drafting though, no doubt he is only star. Ooh, Andrew Winslow went at 16. There was a lot of centers in this class. This guy was one of them, he went at 16. Our pick was at 14, of course. We made the right choice. You want to know what I'm intrigued in, though? That defensive tackle that I wanted to take instead of the receiver. And he went just three picks after me here. Jimmy Boone to my Miami Dolphins. He was only normal, too. Either way. I just bought one last thing, and now I have 27 staff points, which I, I now don't have enough for the We've seen enough. Year two now, and the main goal this year is to get that playoff win that we were so close to getting last season. We're going to go ahead and do a little youth movement here, though, in the offensive line with Mahogany starting and um, Swan. I almost said Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> Defensively, and Ronald Beal was a big addition to the linebacker room, pretty much replacing like for like with uh, Jack Sanborn. But we also got Felix Mabry now, who I did make a defensive tackle, and I'm going to be starting him right away. And how could you forget the main man, Mike Sloan, the hidden dev fullback? I'm excited to see what Drev Trady is. X Factor? Superstar? Let's try to do the most Caleb Williams throw of all time. Sling. Oh, I thought it was going to be a triple. That would have been nasty. <laughs> yup. Sling. Bro, why is Keenan? I might never see one again after last video. Okay, I simmed one week. We now have 40 staff points. So now we can go ahead and reveal somebody, of course. I think I'm going to do Felix Mabry, who was the first round pick, as he is going to be remembered at defensive tackle. He's a star dev, baby. Let's go. Dude, when is the last time I've hit a superstar in my videos? I swear. <laughs> Ooh, and at the midseason mark, we're just two and four. As Caleb is having a big sophomore slump less touchdowns more picks than last season at this time only 200 yards per game too player negotiations we do have a lot of money though swift dj moore jaquan brisker kevin byard big names here braxton jones and keenan allen let's get swift through the doors as soon as we can thank you dj moore more years on the deal for you brother jaquan brisker i don't want him going anywhere either okay byard we wait because he's 32 braxton jones maybe i get an upgrade in the offseason keenan allen just is um same thing with byard is just very old nowadays and we're two and five now after an L against the Niners. Surely we beat the Giants, right? We do 30 24. Back on track. Now we have the Panthers up next. Remember, we do not have their pick anymore. That was last year. 
And they beat us. They won the trade, I guess. <laughs> um, the top of this class has a right tackle, right tackle, left tackle, left tackle in the top five. If you missed my last video, a little bit of a spoiler alert here. Holy crap, look at JJ Oliver. There was a tackle that went number one of the Jets in like round in like year four that ended up being a superstar X Factor. So I'm gonna do anything, any anything in my power to try and get that again. Although that's like the first one I've seen all year. I'm gonna put one on JJ Oliver though. You guys saw those ratings. We may need a replacement for the outgoing Kevin Byard. Let's put it on Danny Peppers. And then Josh Philbin, a big D tackle out of Mizzou. And also was able to get back Jaquan Brisker. And we finished dead last two, six and 11. What happened this season? Dude, what Caleb Williams just regressed so much. Less yardage there with 4,063. Only 23 touchdowns this season and 12 interceptions. Every stat genuinely got worse a less qbr less yardage less touchdowns more interceptions even took way more sacks this season maybe because i started those two young linemen instead of ryan bates and nate davis this offseason i will address o-line don't even worry about it deandre swift very similar um numbers in terms of yards and average to last season but exploded for 19 touchdowns. Incredible year. As DJ Moore, remember the number one this season, 1,343 yards, only four touchdowns. Good year though, but remember, Keenan Allen exploded last season. Maybe Caleb Williams is a Keenan Allen version. I mean, we saw them dapping up at his pro day too. Troy Franklin, very quiet numbers this season as well. Cole Komet, not great. Who gave up the most sacks? Braxton Jones with 14. Darnell Wright with 11. Braxton Jones... Your days are numbered here in Chicago, I ain't even gonna lie. As defensively, TJ Edwards and Tremaine Edmonds combined for a 250 tackles there. TFL's 18 for Montez Sweat, 15 for Mabry, 14 for Law 2. The sack number's down a little bit though. Eight and a half for Law 2 as he leads the way. Sweat only with seven, but the rookie Felix Mabry gets himself seven and a half to Javon Dexter, only one and only eight TFLs. He's been a little quiet. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I was expecting big things from him. TJ Edwards, Jaden Johnson with two um four interceptions each for them, two for Brisker and Gordon. Burrow ends up going back to back as Sam Howell is number three. Ooh, Felix Mabry wins defensive rookie of the year. That could be big. I'm praying for a superstar dev. Beal was number nine. Other than that, though, nothing. Very disappointing season. Not sure what this sophomore slump is for Caleb as DJ Moore doesn't even go up to X Factor. And neither does DeAndre Swift after a 19 touchdown season there, sadly. Um, Swan is only a star as well, which is sad. Sloan, we still don't have. Defensively, Mabry does end up going up to superstar. Okay, that's big time. Bio ends up only being a star, sadly, but to be expected. I love Mabry going up, though. As the Ravens beat the Cowboys 35-13 here, the golden boot winner was Lamar Jackson. Darn all right, fifth year, we are going to accept that. Kevin Byard is regressing, but he's still kind of good for us at an 85 overall. I don't mind just a one-year deal. Braxton Jones, on the other hand, I am going to let walk Keenan Allen. I know I drafted Middlebrooks last year, but like I said, he's kind of the main topic of this video. Him and Caleb Williams, I would say, so I, I kind I don't want to keep him res around as long as possible. He's being very rude. And the worst part is to tag him would cost 35 mil. I mean, that's a big chunk of our salary. TJ Edwards is going to go. Kyler Gordon, same thing. Zadarius Smith, all these guys. I'm going to tag him though. I want to win with Keenan Allen, which is totally fine because we still got about 35 mil to spend here. And here's the upgrade I was talking about on Braxton Jones, Jordan Mailata. Jordan Mailata would be absolutely perfect. He does have some interest too. I'm giving him a bag. As we are in the hunt, but I kind of want to be comfortably at the top. Which means more money for you, Jordan. More money for you. Okay, after that though, I'm not gonna lie. We only have about 11 mil left. <laughs> Contracts have been reviewed and we end up with Jordan Mailata. Josh, Josh Pascal. Pascal, just to be a little bit of a backup. Brent Hundley, because he's a mentor. Mailata, of course, the big one though. That is a massive upgrade at the left tackle position. Caleb Williams, blindside protector. I have zero recollection of what i did oh philbin's around one talent not bad i believe we lost kyla gordon so we need another corner Luis miles here out of the u looks insane john Wynn, a middle linebacker out of oregon sko ducks and then i don't know i'm just gonna throw it on brett finnegan to know his talent and we actually should have a top pick right pick number seven what a fall texans number one pick what happened to stroud i'm here at pick seven this might sound crazy what are the odds i go tight end jarvis woods in here just looks Kind of ridiculous out of South Carolina. His ratings all around pretty good with elite agility there. Everything else is pretty much great. And his ratings, I mean, he's got A to C pretty much everywhere. We don't really have him scouted, but I mean, the boom potential, I think, is through the roof with this guy. I'm tempted, but I never hear the end of it if I chose a tight end at seven that wasn't even better than Cole Komet. We got Philbin still here at 15. I could go. He's around one talent. Corner is all the way down here at 33. Is there a world we can trade back a little bit and get a player? Maybe like the commanders with pick 16. Ooh, they got Chase Young. Imagine him on that team. And then I don't know. Would you give me Sam Cosme? He is an 87 overall, but he is only normal development. Maybe I might 
Okay, never mind. Ooh, okay, this I love. Kobe Turner, as well as the second round pick at number 54 for our first round pick with the Rams. Might even try to add like a little bit more just to be greedy, to be honest with you. It's still accepted. Even with the third round pick, we get an 85 overall Kobe Turner, who I'm going to move the defensive tackle, and he's going to be the day one starter, top of the depth chart. Of course, we did trade out of number seven. They take the tight end, I swear. They just gave up all that to get that tight end who I was contemplating. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to try to um, move up here and get that corner. I'm in round two now and he's gone. He's gone. Round two, I'm going to go with strong safety, Jared Hill. Just looks like the best available guy left on the board. There are no corners in this class besides a dude way later on that I'll go ahead and grab. So I'm just going to take Jared Hill here. Maybe we play him in the nickel. Maybe he shines. He ends up being hidden dev. So, hey, it's not a bad pick in my eyes. Wait. Wait, didn't I get a second pick from the Rams? Is it next year? Wait, why did it say 54? I thought it would say 2027 second round pick, but it said 54. I'm not gonna lie, they just scammed me because I definitely thought that was this season. <laughs> First pick in the third round, I'm gonna go with tight end Matt Carl. We need a backup tight end. This guy looks like the best one. Only normal. Out of Oregon, though. And with our other draft pick at uh, 14, I'm going to go with Paul Hamilton. This is the corner I was talking about. Out of UW, kind of DBU. Um, he looks pretty good. 6'3", elite jumping, good acceleration, good strength. Not the craziest of phys um, physical ratings, but it is a day three projection. He looks solid overall. A press, I like. B zone coverage, B tackle. A to C awareness is pretty high, too. So in the third round, I think the value is there. 6-2, by the way, not 6-3. He is hidden dev, though, so great pick. He's probably going to come in and be our CB3 right away with the outgoing Kyler Gordon. Bit of an odd draft all around. Matt Carl is a 64, by the way. Nice pick. Nice pick. Jared Hill's a 74. 71 for Hamilton. Not bad. Yet yeah, not our best draft, though. Of course, where we did the damage, though, is trading for Kobe Turner. Should I have done it? Should I have just pulled the trigger? I knew he looked crazy, bro. I did. If he's X-Factor... It was just the thought of taking a tight end at seven and him not working out because we already have Komet it was a thought in my head that scared me. I should have just took the gamble. An 82 overall X-Factor tight end. And I didn't take him. Oh, here's Lewis Miles. The other guy I had on my draft board. Oh my God. Generational fold from me. Okay, he's only a star at least. Still a good player though. I cannot believe this tight end. I'm not gonna lie. That makes me kind of sad. When we talk about franchises being held back, they're gonna they're gonna point to this draft class I just had. Philbin, remember we had him too. Albeit we did end up getting Kobe Turner, who's a superstar, so I ain't complaining at all. Damn, I could have had a generational draft here. Okay, Eric Gooden went at number 10. At number seven, I contemplated him or the tight end because this guy looks like an awesome right guard too. Superstar. Man, oh man. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> He's actually a superstar. I drafted a superstar fullback. Oh, this this rebuild changes right here. He just flipped the switch. Hold up. Whoa, I got a superstar fullback. Now in year three, after seeing Mike Sloan be a superstar, I think we're ready to take that next jump up. Caleb Williams, we need a huge bounce back season from you, my guy. Not sure what happened in year two. And don't you worry, we had a great draft for you too, like guys like Carl, 64 overall. Defensively, though, the big addition in Kobe Turner, who I did give up a lot to get, so I hope he can make an impact right away. We got Hill here. Mr. Paul Hamilton's going to start at cornerback three. This D-line looks awesome now. I low-key... Might start Mabry just because of the superstar dev and the upside as a whole. Paul Hamilton is our CB3, but Jared Hale will be starting at the nickel. Ladies and gentlemen, we may be back. 5-2, and two, top of the north. A weekly award winner, too. That's going to be Caleb Williams. He's back on track. 265, three passing touchdowns, 23 for 28. Kenny Pickett's on the Jets now and went off. Jared Hale is only a star because of course he is. I'm still a tad bit salty about that tight end. Don't mind me, especially because we traded back for a 2027 Freaking second round pick from the Rams. They screwed me. Edmonds is here. Tyreek Stevens and Kobe Turner. We already got to pay. That's why it was that easy to get him. Although I overpaid a ton. Um, Tremaine Edmonds, we definitely got to keep around because I've lost TJ Edwards. I've lost Jack Sanborn, I guess. He's pretty much the main man. He's here to stay after a big contract. And then Kobe Turner, on the other hand, we desperately have to keep because I gave up so much to get him now. I'm not going to lie. Our money is running a tad thin. So for the rest of these guys, I think I'm going to wait till the end of the year. End of the season. Please tell me we make it back. We do. 
13. Look at this division, by the way. 13 and 4, and we're second, and we're tied with the Packers and the Vikings, huh? We are back, though. We started off 1 and 2, losing to the Jets and the Panthers, who, if you didn't see, we do have in the wild card round. We went on a massive winning streak in the middle of the season there, lose to the Vikings 31 35, and they, they swept us. All right, though, I'm happy. I'm glad to see us back where we belong, fifth in offensive yards. That took a big jump, if I'm not mistaken, defensively. What is wrong with this defense? Who cares? Who cares? We went 13 and four, and Caleb Williams had a bounce back of the ages. 4,033 yards, 38 touchdowns, and just two interceptions with a 72% completion rate. This might be an MVP campaign. What in the world? DeAndre Swift was unbelievable. 1,467 yards, but 5.6 a carry is crazy. 14 touchdowns, two, nine for Warren, two for Caleb, four for Roshan, one for Komet. Ton of tuds on the ground as Keenan puts up 1,275 yards. DJ Moore a yard shy of 1,200. Keenan had 21 touchdowns. I didn't even see that. Caleb Williams is the biggest Keenan Allen merchant I have ever seen. <laughs> 21 touchdowns is outrageous for the new acquisition. Torrey Franklin as the number three has not done much this video, has he? Same with Komet, to be honest with you, who could have been... That dude's name Jarvis something. <sighs> Jordan Mailata only gave up seven sacks this season. That's a massive upgrade on, I believe, the 14 that Braxton Jones gave up last year. Darnell Wright with only two is very impressive. Defensively monster year from Tremaine Edmonds with 144 tackles. 18 TFLs for Kobe Turner. Latu with 13, 10 for Sweat and Mabry. But the sack numbers, Liatu, Latu has exploded onto the scene. 16 and a half sacks, 10 for Montez Sweat. So we get two in the double digits, eight and a half for Kobe Turner as well. Monster year from the defense although it was 25th ranked that's okay two picks for the uh the guys here <laughs> and because we finished second in the division we're gonna have to go away in carolina to play bryce young the dj more revenge game can we get our first playoff win of the video we do 31 13 and we're back where we started in year one in the wild card the packers this time we get him in the divisional they're 13 and 4. They didn't win the division though, so we're going to be at home in Chicago. Can we get our revenge? And let's get things started here at Soldier Field with one of the best NFL rivalries that there is. We're we take a 10-0 lead in the first half. The Packers haven't drove down at all. 13-0. We got to get Caleb. Okay. They get 6 points to get their first touchdown of the game. It's still 20 to 6, still a two possession game. And here with 4.20 to go, we got a close one. Packers only down by a touchdown. It's also a third and 10. Caleb Williams is in empty. Can we get a big first down? There was a pick. Are you kidding me? That's not what we wanted. Tyler Newbin, the rookie in 20, or the prospect in 2024, giving the Packers and Jordan Love the ball back. Josh Jacobs here as well. We're stuffing him though. Look at all the bear jerseys around him. Jordan Love drops back to pass this time on second and 10. Finds a little crosser. And once again, we get a ton of bodies on him. Were we not up 20 to zero as well? It is, that is not good to give them another chance to get back in this game. A one possession game here. It's another first down from him. Second and five after the two minute warning. Jordan Love and empty. Drops back, slings it again. It's great defense. Third and five. I wonder if they take a field goal if they don't get this. That should have been a pick. That should have been a pick, Brisker. That was right in your hands. We do get it. They're going to go for it, though. Brisker. Brisker, I don't know how you didn't intercept that, my guy. Fourth and five. Jordan Love. Picked off. Tyreek Stevenson. May have just won us the game. They do still have three timeouts left. We need a first down. Brisker couldn't get the pick. Tyreek Stevenson said, I got gotcha. you. I'll pick up my brother. Minute and 50 to go. DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift. That's game. That's game. That's game. We beat the Packers in the divisional round. Okay, it's definitely not game yet. They're going to have like 40, 50 seconds left if we can't get this, which is a bit of time, especially at the end of the game. Reach forward. Reach forward. <laughs> that was the best first down I've ever seen. We just saw a tush push in the middle of a play, which now gets us in victory formation. That was sick. That was sick, bro. He was reaching. Let's go. Our first playoff win, and we wouldn't want to have it any other way at home against Green Bay. Nothing can really beat that besides a Super Bowl, of course. But in our way, we have another divisional opponent. It is the one seed in the North. The Minnesota Vikings also finished 13 and 4. This is a great playoff run from us. If we can beat the Packers and the Vikings, this will be great. If I can load in. Okay, I've 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 been here for like two minutes, bro. <laughs> 
Oh, we're in. Okay. Um, we're in 89. They're in 86. Drake May is over there, of course. The UNC man, May versus Caleb. Let's get it rocking. A real possibility in real life if Minnesota trades up, which would be fun because I actually did a Drake May Vikings rebuild earlier in the season, and that video was starting to pop off now because of the real chance that they could trade up and get Drake May himself. Let's get things going, though. We get the first touchdown of the game here, but they equalize. Second quarter, halfway through, we get the lead once again going up 14-7, 17-7, 10 point lead. And we shut them out there at the end of the first half. It is a 10 point game here in the middle of the third quarter. And they cut it down to just 10. Now we score 28 31, four minutes to go. And I think I'm just going to watch these for now. Years four and year five, I will hop in and will our way to the Super Bowl if need be. DeAndre Swift has been a monster. Look at the. Did you see his stats right there? He has actually been more than worth the contract the Bears gave in real, in real life. He has been phenomenal for us. Third and five, though. I didn't realize that was second down. Cole Komet as. You idiot. That was not him. He got tackled backwards. Vikings have the ball. Drake May is not white. <laughs> yeah, I downloaded this class in the franchise, so it's a little glitchy. I think the player models are all messed up. What a grab by Addison, bro. All they need is a field goal as well to tie up this game. We're only up three, two, 25 to go. May drops back to pass once again. It's another Jordan Addison chunk. Drake May is killing us, dude. And the way they're driving so far, please just keep them out of the end zone, bro. Drake May picked off. It's Jalen Johnson, the main man himself. What a freaking play Drake May was having. A game of the ages, too. And that was the most costly play of the game. Jalen Johnson may have just done it, but we need a first down here. Because the Vikings still have all three timeouts. DeAndre Swift... If any man will take four, will take four. As their first timeout is used, little counter to Swift here. He finds the gap. That was great blocking, great patience, great all-around play from our offense. First in 10 now, second in six. We hand it off again, and it's a first down. DeAndre Swift has been so... Let me look at the numbers. Oh, my God. He has been exceptional for us in this playoff run so far, and he's maybe the MVP of our team so far through the playoffs three games in, but now... We go to the biggest game of all, the Super Bowl. Can the Bears under Caleb Williams bring one home? Back-to-back -back game where our defense pretty much wins us the game. Caleb was not great. Only 158 yards, one touchdown. Drake May was spectacular until that final drive. Yeah, no doubt the MVP though. DeAndre Swift, 17 attempts, 162 for nine and a half a carry, as well as three touchdowns to add on to that. As Dontavion Wicks is here, him, Jetta, Addison combined for almost 300 yards. It was an extremely quiet day from DJ Moore, only nine yards. Defensively though, Felix Mabry and Kobe Turner, two sacks each, and of course, Jalen Johnson with that pick. As we punch our ticket to the Super Bowl, taking down two divisional rivals and the Panthers too to face off against the 12-5 Baltimore Ravens. And remember the checklist, we still have a Super Bowl to get, a regular season MVP, Super Bowl MVP, which hopefully will come with the Super Bowl MVP unless DeAndre Swift nabs it, and a Best QB Award. Caleb Williams has a shout to win MVP this year. But it goes to Dak Prescott instead. Allen, number two. Drake May, number three. But Caleb is number four. We're inching closer and closer. Huge, massive jump, though, in year three to make it all the way to the Super Bowl. Caleb still... Caleb, how did, Deon, how did nobody go up? DeAndre Swift had 1,500 yards, 5.6 carry, 14 touchdowns. Ridiculous. And he didn't go up a dev trade? Are you drunk? Caleb Williams had 38 touchdowns to two picks? I don't know what else you could want from this offense. It's an agenda against the Bears. Hamilton only a star to be expected. Hill? Hill? Did he he went up, right? Because I saw him at midseason. He went up to superstar playing in the nickel. The draft pick we traded back to get, of course, has paid dividends. Florida State DBU, you can't go wrong. But let's go ahead and hop into this Super Bowl against a 90 overall Raven squad. Roquan back playing us as well. Look at the top two guys, Roquan and Tremaine Edmonds gonna be a battle let's get things kicked off in the super bowl here in just year number three we drive down only come away with three though i feel like we were inside the 10 there ravens scored the first touchdown of the game that is we score we eagleize right back though 10 7 10 all game here end of the first quarter we get a touchdown to end things off and the ravens don't get any they do start second half with the ball i think and they're driving only take three though we still have a four point lead seven point lead now heading into the fourth quarter ravens have the ball huge 12 yard reception on a third and eight from brian thomas jr who they took in 2024 it looks like and they are driving down onto our red zone quickly onto our 22 8 15 to go 
with Derrick Henry, of course. Here, too, that could have been a pick, but it's a great play nonetheless. We cannot let him get inside the 10, because how in the world do you stop Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry as they're inside the 10? After a wonderful throw by Lamar, however, Derrick Henry is now lined up out wide. It didn't matter. He used it as bait. Mark Andrews gets an easy touchdown. I mean, what a drive. And with 7.40 to go, the ball game is all tied up at 20 here. Caleb Williams in empty slings it. And Keenan Allen drops it. A bit of a hospital ball, I guess. But man, in this moment, I need you more than ever, Keenan. I need you more than ever. Like we've had, like DeAndre Swift has been this entire playoff series so far. He has been putting up monster numbers every single game. He gets us a huge chunk there with just 7.05 to go. Keenan Allen is... What is what are we doing? Why are we running a jet sweep for a 34-year-old receiver who has absolutely lost his step? He lost his step like five years ago. Second and 12. Caleb slings it. Bomb down the right side. Little underthrown. Little underthrown. Troy Franklin actually had Marlon beat there. But the uh, the short ball let Marlon Humphrey get back in that play and make a deflection. May able to make a play. Third and 12 now. It's going to be a screen pass that we don't even get out. Come on, dude. What a disappointing drive. So we punt the ball back to Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. Third and two. They convert. They get a huge chunk play to Rashad Bateman. And we just cannot. We have no answer for this Ravens O. However, it is a third and four. If we can get a stop here, just hold them to three. I will be feeling a bit confident in our chances. But we just let Derrick Henry run without even getting touched for the first 15 yards of that. First and goal on our five. They could kill a lot of time here too if we don't use any timeouts. As we're not going to because this game's kind of dumb. Minute and 30. I mean, I guess we could still stop them though. But Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry is maybe one of the hardest tandems to stop once they get inside the five. They're wasting all the clock possible because we didn't call a timeout for whatever reason. And they take a freaking um, delay a game. What? <laughs> That's huge. And they're now backed up onto the eight. That was a costly mistake from Lamar. They hand this one off again to Derrick Henry. Timeout. Third and goal. If we can hold him to three here with a minute to go, a timeout remaining two. Caleb Williams, man, that would really be a legacy drive of the ages. Derrick Henry gets the ball again. I mean, I'm short, but does Harbaugh and Lamar go for it? They don't. This is a place that Lamar and Harbaugh would most definitely go for the game. He would be like, Lamar, you want to go? And Lamar ain't saying no to that. However, they're going to take the three points here and give Caleb Williams the ball for one last drive to potentially win the Super Bowl. Our defense stepped up when we needed them inside the 20. Can our offense go? Can we stop dropping balls? Like, I don't know where else you want Caleb Williams to put that. DJ Moore just comes down and bricks it, bro. Dime. DJ Moore makes up for it with a huge grab here as we're on to the 46 already. We got to go. No huddle. We only have one timeout. We got to make we gotta make use of that timeout as the best we can. Troy Franklin. Troy Franklin. Hurry up. Come on. A little seven-second runoff. Not too bad. I think we're in field goal range already, so we should be chilling. But can we maybe look even in the end zone? Don't throw a pick, though, Caleb. You know what would be nice, Madden? If we could see how long this field goal is. It is just nowhere on the screen. It's quite deep, though. Probably 45, 50 yards here. We need you, Cairo Santos. And he... He missed. Who are you blaming? Who are you blaming? That's how we're going to lose. That's the most Bears loss I've ever seen in my life. All right. As it is uh, glitching out here. It, look, there, the trophy ceremony's going. There's zero seconds left. I can run a play, but the trophy ceremony's coming, huh? The game still ended up going through, though. The Super Bowl MVP should have been Cairo Santos because he just won you guys that game. And after that heartbreak, our window is kind of shrinking now. We have a contract, a fifth year here for Caleb Williams, Lyle Tulatu, of course, too. Tyreek Stevenson, Javon Dexter, Keenan, Kevin Byard, of course. And we only have about 20 mil. So first, let's just get these two guys out the way. And then out of everybody here, I'm sorry, Byard and Keenan, I didn't want to win with you guys, but... 35 years old and 34 years old means his time is probably out. And Javon Dexter has been relegated to defensive tackle number three now, which means Tyreek Stevenson is the guy I would want, but I kind of have an idea. So because Keenan just keeps regressing, he's not asking for the most anymore. What if I just gave him this deal on a one year? Then we give Tyreek Stevenson a massively disrespectful contract for the sole purpose of us being able to now franchise tag him. 
Stonks. Well, maybe you shouldn't take that advice from me. <laughs> and look, we were literal inches away from winning a Super Bowl, so I kind of just want to run it back with a few players. Oh, hold up. We got 8 mil out of nowhere in available salary cap. And I'm curious, is there anywhere else we could save some money? Jalen Johnson, about 15 mil. Obviously, not going to do that, though. Tyreek Stevenson, who we just tagged. Cole Komet save about 9, but it's hard to get a better tight end than him. Although, we could just draft one. Because, to be honest with you, Cole Komet really has not been too involved. Let's first off see what's even going on in free agency. AJ Brown, Tyler Linderbaum is a name you don't really see too often. Ryan Ramchick, Ronnie Stanley, the usual tackles here um, in this day of age. A superstar Rashad Douglas is interesting too. Kevin Byard, of course. And let's just test out the waters. What could we get for Cole Komet? A superstar Baron Browning, Ed Woodson running back, wide receiver Cooper DeGene, who's a superstar. 82 overall, still just 24, you know. Okay, and interestingly, the Saints were the worst team in the league. Pick number one here. I'm gonna, I took out Cooper DeGene. I'm just gonna ask for picks because we're gonna need to save some money here. Let's just see what they say with that. Orange. What if I got rid of the future second and just for 33 and 65 this year? Very close. Okay, how about we get rid of the third this year and add a third next year? That may be accepted. Maybe I should add something else. <laughs> Fifth round pick, just a little cherry on top. Okay. I'll just sprinkle in a 2029 20, six rounder and the trade should be accepted. Kolkomet, thank you for everything you've done here, but uh, you're not too involved and um, are probably easily replaceable. <laughs> And we saved ourselves some money. Tucker Craft, come on, bro. Oh my. We get Rashua Douglas on a one year and then Geno Smith to be a mentor. And Tucker Craft is being so stingy here for no reason. You have no other offers. Thank you for joining though. <laughs> and before we do our workouts, we have picked 31, 33 now, 37, 63, and 95 in the top three rounds. And the reason I opted to get a lot of picks is just because it would save a lot of money and we're going to lose and have to replace a lot of people next year, it seems like. A lot of good looking tight ends in this class. I think my favorite one is Jamie Tyson. If I could grab corner Julius Andrews out of USC, I'd be delighted. And oh yeah, we don't have Kevin Byard anymore. So Gordon Burney, could you replace him? And Julius Andrews looks ridiculous. He is 6'3", still just 21 years old too, rating-wise. Only solid acceleration there in change of direction, but everything else looks really good. And bro, his core attributes too, this dude does not have one flaw. Now remember, we did draft the safety last year, Hale, so he could probably replace um Kevin Byard as Andrews is all the way down here at 42. And um, well, here's to praying he's landing there. Before we do anything though, Julius Andrews, shout out Craig Dawson, the center back for like... I think he played on West Brom. That is that was a random player I could think of. You guys saw Julius Andrews. You saw how good he is. Tyreek Stevenson is playing on a franchise tag, of course. Not sure we're going to be able to afford him, be able to afford him next season. So Julius Andrews hopefully can be that like-for-like -like replacement and be that hidden dev that we so desperately love. 6'3", with 90 acceleration, 90 speed, 93 jumping. He can jump out the park. 89 change of direction, 80 agility is crazy. This dude looks like a monster. And uh, one pick later, we're back on the board. I Low-key, that guy looks kind of good. And with pick one, I'm not going to lie, this offensive line class looks kind of nice. And with the amount of picks we have, I feel like we can just go with the best player available here at this spot and maybe get um, a replacement for maybe Tevin Jenkins or Jordan Mylotta if they decide to go. I'm going to go Ed Sylvie here and just sit him for a year just so we have that insurance policy if we do not have the money to resign anybody. This guy's only 21. He's out of Bama, 6'4", 341 monster on the old line only normal though i chose the wrong one there were so many good looking ones okay so jamie tyson the tight end is number 47 on the big board here but remember we have 31 so about 25 picks away i'm praying he's still there at that time Look at this dude hold up okay this linebacker at number 50 looks pretty awesome as well so i might just take jamie tyson right now six five possession archetype out of arkansas there his ratings all around look decent too marginal acceleration but that's okay for a tight end his core attributes on the other hand look spectacular with a awareness break tackle catching traffic run block short route he's got b's and catching medium route impact blocking this dude looks like a beast can be the like for like replacement for cole Komet, um and on a much cheaper deal and he ends up being hidden dev, so you know what? I think we made the right choice. Also, I hate that picture. He looks like he's 50 years old. He just got drafted, man. <laughs> All right, we are here now at pick 31. I'm praying that linebacker is still there, and he is. Steven Howell just looks like a beast out of Clemson. The run stopper with elite acceleration and great speed. Quite the athlete himself and his core attributes, too, similarly to Jamie Tyson. Look really, really appealing. However, his uh, normal dev trait does not. End of round three, I'm going to go with free safety Joe Crockett here out of Stanford just to get some depth at the safety position after losing Kevin Byard, of course. 
he is too only normal which kind of sucks but all in all i still think we had a really good draft because julius anderson is 77 overall sylvie only 73 tyson 73 but hidden of course how 75 and normal that sucks or it doesn't suck he's a 75 he's still gonna play a good role on this team cpu didn't do too much crockett is not good at all this class as a whole though wasn't too great a running back 79 a six round wide receiver is the second highest overall in the class only normal as let's go ahead and review the main man himself we only got two that draft that's kind of pain julius andrews though the top five corner that we got at the tail end of round one does he make a difference can he be the guy to take us over that hump Actually, you know what? One last move here. Cairo Santos, you can get the hell out of here. Let's get ourselves a real kicker in Dicker. As we were so close to glory last season, let's go ahead and start Tyson this offense, though. Looks ready to run it back. And defensively, we did move Jared Hill out to free safety, and this defense low-key looks kind of fire all around. Julius Andrews is now here, too. Rashad Douglas, who we picked up on a one-year deal. Um, Howell there. I almost said Sam Howell, but... This defense looks as good as it's ever been. As at midseason, we're four and three, second in the North. Packers are five and one. Is there any chance we have our tight ends dev trait? Oh my god. The only superstar I've drafted in like my last four videos is a fullback. But I mean, hey, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. As our top two corners need a contract, Darnell Wright's now here. Mahogany, Montez Sweat, Rashad Douglas, Troy Franklin, Keenan's back, of course, and we only got 27 mil. So honestly, for now, I, I think we just wait till the end of the year <laughs> and we'll just figure it out then. The Lions are only 1-6. We beat them 17-10. Big game against the Chiefs. We beat them 24-21. Okay. The number one dude in this class, Ben Livingston, defensive tackle, looks out of this world. I might do everything in my powers to get him. Earl Reed, we're going to need it. He's 6-9 as a receiver. <laughs> and then we'll throw the last one on Vince Duval here. Let's go. As we make the playoffs once again, can we just finish first for once? Why are we always tied with somebody else? Caleb, once again, a very good year. 4,145 yards, 37 touchdowns, only five interceptions. DeAndre Swift very consistently has been putting up great numbers all video. As the tandem of DJ Moore and Keenan Allen combined for 2,200 yards and 20 plus touchdowns. Troy Franklin also really good as a number three this year. Eight touchdowns, 911 yards. And Jamie Tyson did pretty much what Komet was doing all video, right? Edmonds, the only man with over triple digit tackles. There are 25 tackle for losses for sweat 22 for colby turner phenomenal numbers there 16 for law 11 for felix mabry the sack numbers though a little down a little down colby turner in the interior gets 11 eight and a half for sweat law only six this year though quite disappointing five interceptions for jalen johnson though two for brisker stevenson and edmonds as ladies and gentlemen we have ourselves a one last hoorah and if i was to guess i would say it's for keenan allen and it looks like it is. The potential retirement of Keenan Allen has fired up the team, plus 10 morale for all players. As we got a wild card matchup against the Niners here, and it's about that time I might start to hop in. Hopefully we can get out of the wild card safely, though. Against a good team, though. 28-25, and here we go again with the Packers. But before we hop in, let's, of course, go get another plus 10 morale as he continues to invigorate teammates. But if we have to do it ourselves, I wouldn't be opposed. They're an 87. We're going to Lambeau because they won the division, of course. They keep winning all these tiebreakers. But that is not going to stop us. Kickoff is on its way. We get the first touchdown of the game here. As the first quarter ends up 7-0. We drive down again, get 14 points. Hold up, the boys are putting on a show. 17-0. I might not even, I, I don't even have to hop in. We are shutting down Jordan Love and the Mickey Mouse screen. Guys, I don't think I have to hop in this game. <laughs> Hold up. We just murdered them. Stop it, guys. Stop it. He's already dead. Keenan Allen, even with one foot in a retirement home, is still putting up elite wide receiver one numbers. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy needs a ring. And all their little piggies are walking home to watch from the couch. What? <laughs> hey, yo, Keenan might have CTE. He's got to retire now. The hell is dude babbling about? We don't have any messages this week. It's just against the Cowboys. The 10 and 7 Cowboys traveling to Chicago to Soldier Field. Can we take him down and make it to back to back Super Bowls? And oh my goodness, it is snowing. But you know what? We wouldn't want to have it any other way because Dak Prescott and weather these these conditions. Dak Prescott in these conditions for seven points of the game goes to us, but they march down, get themselves a touchdown. We take the lead. We're dr Yo, this team is on fire. Hold up. Our defense is kind of getting sliced up right now, but we respond with a touchdown. 28-17. I don't even have to hop in. This team has rallied back to the Super Bowl, putting up 42 points in the conference championship. 35 points, was it? 37 points in the uh, divisional round. 
We're freaking back. Caleb Williams, this is your season, my guy. The heck? The boys are absolutely cooking right now. Caleb, phenomenal game. Keenan Allen is going out with a bang, bro. 12 receptions, 126 yards, one touchdown. DJ Moore equally as impressive. Oh, 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 look at my boy Jamie Tyson found the end zone too. And with the way the boys are performing, I may just let them do their thing as we're going to have a Caleb Williams, CJ Stroud Super Bowl. That is pretty freaking awesome. Caleb, Doc, did, we, did you see what we just did to that man? Caleb Williams, number five, the disrespect. Ooh, Jalen Johnson won best DB finally. As I'm hoping this is the season we finally get a Caleb Williams up to superstar X Factor, and we do. Nothing else on the offensive scene. I don't know how DJ Moore has not gone up yet. Keenan Allen is going out on freaking top right now. Defensively, Kobe Turner, superstar X Factor. Jalen Johnson, superstar X Factor, as well as Rashad Douglas, who we, of course, got on a one-year rental. I see my boy... I always want to say Sam Howell. Howell goes up to star as well, though. The uh, third round pick, I believe. Second round pick? I think so. And you know what? We're back in the Super Bowl, except this time, no more Cairo Santos. I signed. Wait, what? Why is he over Dicker the Kicker? No, moral of the story, no more Cairo Santos. <laughs> Texans got a super team themselves. Stingley, Stroud, Nico, Will Anderson, all superstar plus there. Lermy Tunsil still around. Tank Dell, of course. Daniel Hunter, the new addition in 2024. Jalen Petrie has developed. They signed themselves Defoe. Joe Mixon is there. Al Shire, Christian Harris, Dalton Schultz. It's a good team. It's a very good team. Sydney Brown's up to a superstar for them, too. But everybody that we have faced so far this season, we have wiped them out the park. This team is ready after that heartbreak last season. We came back this season with revenge on our mind. Playing with a vengeance, an anger, so passionate. Houston drives down. Do not score there here as we get the first touchdown of the game. 7-0 after the first. Houston has the ball, though, and Stroud gets them into the end zone, but we respond extremely quickly. It's a tie ball game, though, at the halftime. Marker 14-all. We start with ball in the second half. Do not score as the Texans. We get no points there in the fourth quarter. It's first and 10. As we get a three-yard rush by DeAndre Swift, a big gain to Keenan Allen as we're inside the 30 now. Caleb Williams, the new superstar X-Factor 9 minutes to go in the Super Bowl hands it off to DeAndre Swift the main man in last year's playoffs remember this year not having a bad day at all second and six now this time around Caleb Williams fakes it to DeAndre Swift and runs into two defensive linemen as he's now in an empty empty set third and nine it's a wide open Keenan Allen who freaking else this man has been on demon time in the playoffs and to be honest with you this entire rebuild Keenan Allen has been putting up monstrous numbers the chemistry with him and Caleb Williams has been one of the best in the very league and what do you know it's Keenan Allen again I'm so glad I've just kept resigning him every season despite him having you no know, no interest I know he's one of the main points in this video I wanted to keep him around and I wanted to win a ring with him as a bear what can the Texans cook up though first and 10 it is a huge penalty by Lermy Tunsil, second and 16, third and 16. They do not convert. Ball is back. We have a chance to end this game. With a passing or rushing touchdown, not a good start. Down a D Swift here. Can he break a tackle? He can not. Five minutes to go in this game. Keenan. As we um, go three and out, definitely wasn't me that hopped in that did that. I don't know what you're talking about. Texans kind of driving here. Four minutes to go. We'll, we'll, we'll save some of our checklist stuff for next year. I'm not trying to... Ruin our chances at at least our first ring. Once we get the first ring out of the way, then I'll feel a little more confident hopping in, you know. I don't want to mess anything up. <laughs> Second in six for the Texans. Down a touchdown. Stroud drops back. Finds a wide open tank Dell. As we have superstars and X-Factors absolutely everywhere on this defense. If you look, Stroud drops back again. Time in the pocket here. Slings it out to the left side. Tremaine Edmonds gets him down, but he did hold on. Third and four just before the two-minute warning. Stroud under center. Passes once again here. And it's Dalton Schultz once again. That's very similar play. As the Texans are now onto the 12. Two-minute warning has now passed. Joe Mixon gets nowhere. Minute 45. It's a great pass, Stroud. What a catch, too. As they're now onto the five, this is no doubt four down territory here. Stroud and the Texans drops back to pass. It's a screen pass. And we get him short of the marker fourth and three. Super Bowl on the line. Can our defense get just one more stop as that tackle was made by Ronald Bia, one of our very own draft picks? As they score. Franklin Connor finds the end zone to tie up this ball game as we're going to have one last chance to drive down and win this one all. Caleb Williams, the entire world 
is watching this moment. 53 seconds, all three timeouts left. Can you cook up a drive for the ages? And remember, no more Cairo Santos. Have you ever been victimized by a missed field goal? No so good! Wide to the right! No good! Ah! My name is Cameron Dicker, and I'll kick for you. There goes our first timeout. Not sure why we used it right there when we could have just ran hurry up. Keenan got out of bounds and gets the first down. Big time play, big time player. He's been coming through in the biggest of moments for us. First and 10, 40 seconds to go. Caleb has room. Caleb scrambling out. That's gotta be rough in the passer, I would say, huh? Second and two though. There goes our second timeout as we're on our 46, just about at the midway point on the field. Caleb Williams. It's Keenan Allen again, though, but we're not getting the chunks that we need. we got to stop settling short. Stop celebrating. Why is the clock? What are we doing? Why are we not even running hurry up? Am I? Can you hurry up? Hold up. Hold up. Okay. Dicker the kicker. Do not pull a Cairo Santos on me. We're getting iced. We're getting iced. I was questioning our clock management there, but you know what? It worked out because we just had to put the faith in the QB1 in Caleb Williams, and in Dicker, the kicker. We win, we win, no more Cairo Santos, baby. Dude, what a run we just went on in this playoffs. Oh my God, we win. Do we? Oh, there's a second left, hold up, hold up. Why didn't we just squib it? Why didn't we just squib it? Who is this, Devin Hester Regen? He's down, Lombardi is coming to Chicago with Caleb Williams under helm, and it's not gonna let me leave, is it? Oh my God, why Why is this a thing? All right, well, no ceremony for me. We'll just go check out the stats real quick. As Stroud had three touchdowns, but one interception. Very similar numbers to Caleb here, but he didn't throw a pick. I'll take that all day. Mixon was mid. DeAndre Swift was kind of mid. Found the end zone though. Caleb had a few good runs. Oh, bro. Keenan Allen, how you are really retiring on top, brother. Oh my God. 11 for 215 and the game... The, the big touchdown in the fourth quarter, I guess we'll say. Troy Franklin at 60 yards. DJ Moore was doing cardio out there. Keenan Allen put this team on his freaking back. He had a long of 75 at the age of 92? Wild, wild numbers. Ronald Beal, two TFLs. No real sacks. I'm a half for Beal and Kobe Turner there as the pick went to Tyreek Stevenson. Oh my, okay, well, there's the trophy ceremony. I, I gotta just leave. Zero seconds on the clock, bro. I don't understand this game. As that now should mean the Super Bowl is, of course, crossed off on the checklist. But is Super Bowl MVP too? It is not because it, of course, goes to Keenan Allen, who just had a monster game. I can't even argue with that, honestly. Kind of sucks for our checklist, but, you know, it's not really... Ooh, did Keenan not retire? And player contracts here. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. We got all these people here. We do not have money. <laughs> we went really all out that year. And maybe not the wisest decision here, but you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> We're bringing him back. I mean, he just had one of the best Super Bowl performances in NFL history. Keenan Allen... Okay. <laughs> um, well, let's uh, try to sign somebody else. Montez Sweat, please take a little bit of a pay cut. Thank you. And we'll franchise tag Keenan Allen. Now we're going to be in a big pickle, but um, I'll try to find something out. But um, looks like we're not going to be doing anything anytime soon. <laughs> As Ben Livingston is to no surprise a top five talent. I don't know if we got the ammo to go up to one. We did Duvall. We'll do him again. Also, this 6'9 receiver, of course. I, I feel like I have to draft him. And then we're probably going to need a corner sometime in this draft. Brandon Kramer, I guess. He looks like the best one. It's not a great looking class. Not scratch that. I'll put it on RJ Selvi. As we most definitely got some big holes to fill after not being able to resign pretty much anybody. That's why we drafted Sylvie, though. Gonna need another offensive lineman, it looks like. But everything else here is good. Remember, we drafted Middlebrooks a long time ago. And he's up to an 80 overall now with morale, which is not even that bad. Defensively, honestly, we're kind of chilling. Just need depth at corner. The receiver is round two to three, but he's 6'9". <laughs> right guard. Okay. And the corner, RJ, just looks kind of mid. As with pick 32, of course, after winning the Super Bowl, I'm going to go with right tackle Mike Mason because we were not able to re-sign Darnell Wright, of course. And this guy looks like the best available lineman prospect, and it's in the exact position that we need. And he's in dev, so I ain't complaining at all. Welcome to the Super Bowl champs. As we are now into 32 in the second round, and we have number six in round three because of the Saints last year for Cole Komet. Hey, looking back, that was a great trade. That's all I'm saying. Ooh, man, I feel like I have to go this guy, but like, we just, 
We just don't need him at all. <laughs> but you know what? I guess we got number six next round. We're going to take Earl Reed for the freaking boys. I'm going to try my best to get him a touchdown as well. He's got great jumping. We know. You're 6'9". You are a Chicago Bear. And you are also hidden development. Honestly, 6'9 with 86 speed and 87 acceleration with 90. Look, he's off the screen with 90 change of direction too. What did we just find in round two? <laughs> and now in round three, I'm going to go ahead and take Brandon Kramer, the guy we saw earlier. We just need um cornerback depth as a whole. He's going to be our CB4 anyway, so he doesn't have to be great. He just has to be serviceable. Kind of blows. As the Super Bowl winners get a 72 right tackle, 72 wide receiver, and Earl Reed. Kramer's actually a 74. He is definitely serviceable. Fox was trash. We've got a decent running back later on. How was the number one guy, though? Ben Livingston. Here he is. Hidden dev. 83 overall. I would guess the highest rated player in this class. Went to the Patriots. We knew he was a top five talent, and he is a superstar X Factor. Maybe, maybe I should have tried. Maybe I should have just at least tried, right? Because, damn it, it's been years since I got an X Factor in one of these videos, bro. Who is this? He's only normal, but man. And I'm going to reveal the 6'9 receiver. He's got to be special, right, with that archetype? And if he is, I will have no problems making him our wide receiver 3 immediately. Really? Only a star, but standing at 6'9", 228 pounds, deep route 70, 78 short route. Spec catch, of course, is great. Catch in traffic. His agility is nice. I wonder how he'd feel in game. As we'll go ahead and make him our wide receiver four anyways, the offense is ready to run it back. Once again, Caleb Williams, can you win yourself an MVP and a Super Bowl MVP? Now, the defense a little revamped, pretty much only at cornerback, where we lost Jalen Johnson, Tyreek Stevenson, and Rashad Douglas, but Pritchett, Julius Andrews, Hamilton, Kramer. It's a young group, but um, hopefully they can do us justice with this freaking pass rush. As we went straight to the playoffs for this final season, can we make it back as the, as the one seed in the NFC? We don't. We only go 10-7, but we finally win this division, at least. We play the Packers again. Ooh, do you see what I see? Is this the season number one? One in offensive yards. Caleb just went crazy. 4,889 yards, 51 touchdowns to eight interceptions. That has to be MVP, right? Wish our record was a little bit better, but still six. Oh, DeAndre Swift has regressed heavily, hasn't he? Is he down? He's still a 91. But this is by far his worst year as um, maybe the outgoing Jalen Warren as our backup. Okay. Keenan Allen is aging like LeBron James out here. What is he doing? 36 years old, he keeps saying, I'm going to retire, I'm going to retire. And he's putting up these numbers. Bro, four yards shy of 1,500 yards, three yards, three catches shy of 100 receptions, and 22 touchdowns. As him and DJ Moore combined for 38 touchdowns, and what is that, 26, 2,700 yards. Middlebrooks is the number three, not too shabby in his first season as a starter. Four tuds, 914 yards. Tyson, better than any season Komet had for us in this rebuild. I, I, I just cannot believe Keenan Allen. Let me check out the blocking real quick because I want to check out our right tackle, Mike Mason. Yep, Keenan Allen is a different animal. 131 tackles, and Ronald Beal gets 110 there, too. Kobe Turner, 16 TFLs. Same with Latu, 10 for Sweat and Mabry there. 8.5 for Kobe Turner, who has been a monster and well worth the trade that we made with the Rams. Even though it seemed like we got fleeced in um, in real time, he has showed out in this uh, in the later stages of this rebuild. Edmonds, 4 picks, 2 for Hamilton and Jared Hill. Not bad. But okay, we're back in the wild card against the 8-9 Packers. Once again, we have one last hoorah, and it's, of course, for LeBron James. The Tom Brady's of wide receivers literally this is crazy every season i'm like ah should i re-sign him back he's getting so old i have to give him all this money and i mean every season i would pay him double triple the money i'm paying him right now if he's putting up these numbers like huh and here we go as green bay tries to get the revenge from that absolute spanking we gave him in last year's playoff of course 37-0 a game we will never forget as we already go up 14-0 it was shades it was ptsd of last season again however they have responded this season 21-9 Middle of the fourth quarter. I think we're chilling here. I think we're chilling here. We're looking good. 31-15. We're going to the next round. As Caleb Williams has now really taken his game to another level somehow. And story of my life, I keep procrastinating this um one of the checklists to throw and get a, pa a passing and rushing touchdown. I still need to hop in. I haven't even done it. Our team's been really good. Granted, I could still just hop in and do it here. As we got the A9 overall Seahawks. No idea who's that QB for them, but JSN, DK, or X Factor. Khalil Mack is still going strong. He's like the Keenan Allen on defense. But looking at it, there is a real chance we actually finish out every single um, checklist that we have for Caleb Williams that we had at the beginning of the season, of course, because if we win a Super Bowl, it's Sam Howell, Super Bowl MVP, MVP, surely he wins with the numbers he puts up, and I just got to get this rushing and uh, passing touchdown in this game. Why did I say it backwards? It's also snowing. 
and they're in white. What is this cheat code? Now, of course, I do still need a passing and a rushing touchdown with Caleb Williams off the checklist. So let's go ahead and play key moments here in, in a good spot. It might be our time to shine as we got ourselves a first and 10 on the 15. Let's go to my boy Jamie Tyson there, the tight end, and get a good chunk of seven. Just going to audible to a run here, second and three. We don't want to score, though, because I do want to score with Caleb. Can I get down on the one here? Get down, Swift, you idiot. <laughs> He's too good. He's too freaking good as we score the first touchdown of the game here. As I believe this is on defense, so let's go ahead and skip it. Skip it again. Oh, my God. I don't... Oh, no, that was us. Oh, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. This is a very confusing way to uh, sim. I've never done it like this in my life. I'm not going to lie. As we're back in the red zone, let's try to get that dud. It's just all going by so quick. We're still in the first quarter, by the way, so plenty of time to go as Tucker Craft, the man we signed last season, is two yards shy of the end zone. But a huge gain nonetheless here. Y is wide open. It's Tucker Craft himself finding the end zone as we get the passing touchdown off, but we still need a rushing one with Caleb. Let's go ahead and continue to the next moment. It's just so hard to keep track. They score as we get a two-minute drill. You know what? Let's play it. Just really wasn't anything there open, was there? DeAndre Swift on a freaking screen. We get great blocking. Can we get out of bounds is what we do. 54 seconds to go. We do still have all of our timeouts, so we should be chilling. But look who it is, the main man himself, Keenan. Let's call it first one. I should have went out of bounds there. But that possession caught it just to play it safe here. 48 seconds to go. DJ Moore. DJ Moore, I'm going to throw it on the outside. It's a little lofty. It's a little lofty. He almost came down with it, though. Second and 10 now. Caleb out of empty. What can we cook up? What can we cook up? Tyson, why are you raising your hand? That was just a bad ball. That was just a bad ball. He was raising his hand, but he couldn't even get to it. The pick was inevitable in this freaking game. <laughs> Third down stop. There's 16 seconds to go. Chill out, bro. The Seahawks driving down here and get a field goal themselves. Our boys do not drive down at all. There is the Seahawks have a chance to take the lead here. And they don't. They get another field goal, however. It is third and two for our squad. We'll hop in as there are seven minutes and 30 to go in the fourth quarter. We're only up one here, so we need to get any sort of points on this drive. As we're going to target, I, I'm just a Tucker Craft merchant, I guess. Okay, let's just go ahead and sim it the regular way. As we do get a field goal, it was a long one, 52 yards. I'm just too confused with it. As we do get the ball back, however, it's a Tevin Jenkins freaking penalty right away. And Jamie Tyson with a huge gain, third and 12. We'll go ahead and hop in. I'm sorry if this is a little bit confusing to keep track of. I don't know why I can't move. Bro, my left stick, I couldn't move. <laughs> what? Well, okay, punting the ball right back. Only up four here as they get a big chunk right away. First and 10. The Seahawks are kind of driving here. And there is just 46 seconds to go. We got to keep out the end zone. We got to keep it out the... <laughs> All right, then. They score right away, and we got about 40 seconds to drive down. We do still have all three timeouts, so now we're only down three, so it's not the end of the world if we can't find the end zone, but we got to get down at least to field goal range here. Do you understand way to hold on? Kind of caught my first time out there. I was hoping I can get around. Just 33 seconds to go already. Scary hours. DeAndre Swift open again here. Can we get out of bounds? You've got to be kidding me, Swift. Second and 10. We desperately need this. Jamie Tyson, the rookie. Not the rookie. The man we drafted last year. We're in field goal range. We should be chilling. Do we take a shot in the end zone here? We might take a shot. We also have Gambit on, so we can't throw an interception. So let's just heave this up to somebody. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Middlebrooks. Middlebrooks, hold up. Now we're on the five. Oh, God. They want us to kick here. Just make sure. I just got to make sure I throw it out if I don't have anything I like. Or can we get the rushing touchdown? Nope, 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 nope. Five seconds. Crap. <laughs> mm, I got to throw this one quick. I really would love the rushing touchdown too, but I cannot waste time here. Can we find the end zone? Can we find the end zone? Can we find the end zone? Bang. Bang. Kevin Middlebrooks in the dying seconds of the game. And that's the final play of the game. We win. We head to the NFC Conference Championship game, although I still need that rushing touchdown with Caleb. Man, that game was tense. That game was tense. Conference Championship, we got the Cowboys 12-5. and five. We are heading to Arlington, so we're going to be in a dome. No bad weather is this time around, and I'm pretty sure we beat them at this time um, last year to get to the Super Bowl, so they're looking for revenge. We're looking to do what we already have done. As things are nice and cozy here in AT&T Stadium, we drove down immediately there. Our defense, can we get a stop? We cannot. First quarter drive, take the lead. On our 25, why would they make me hop in here? That's what I'm talking about. What the heck? What are you doing? Skip the moment. Can we drive now? No, we cannot. We punted right away. Our defense needs to be nope. 
Defense needs me. Nope. Our defense needed me. I should have hopped in. <laughs> As we now have a third and six on the 31, we really need this rushing touchdown with Caleb. We need to win this game too. And there's a real chance we actually are able to check things off of this checklist, check everything off. Keenan Allen, who else? Continue the next moment and it's third down again. I should have just freaking stayed in, but tell you what, if we can get a few yards here, maybe four down tear. That was looking promising too. There was so much room on that left side. The Cowboys are just on fire right now. 21 points. Did we just throw a pick? I don't even know what's going on. It's 28 to 10 here in the first half. Are you kidding me? I don't want to play. Holy crap. Are they going to make me play every single time? 31-13. Our offense can't do anything. Neither can our defense. As we're on the 12 now, if we can just check off this rushing touchdown, I will be pretty happy. DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift, go down. Oh my god, Swift. He's done it again. He's actually done it again. The thing is, I don't even want to sneak it in. I want like a real touchdown, but man, it's going to be tough, isn't it? The moment. Skip the moment. Skip the moment. Hold up. Actually, crap. There's only 13 seconds. What in the world? Can we hurry up, Caleb? Where is the urgency? Through the middle. Through the middle. Caleb! Caleb! We've done it. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. Sadly, it may be little too late, too little too late in this game for us to come back, but um, I am happy. Hold, hold up. We'll play this onside kick. I mean, there's only six seconds left and we have no timeouts. There are minimal, minimal chances of us make that. All right, well, <laughs> as we're going to go ahead and lose this game, 31-28. We actually made a sort of a comeback at the end there, but that first half, I mean, they just annihilated us. However, all I wanted was that rushing touchdown, and I'm more than happy that we actually got it. Bro, and I don't even know what to even say anymore. Keenan Allen is just unreal. Super Bowl week now, and off the checklist, we just need best QB, regular season MVP, and Super Bowl MVP, I believe. Obviously, we can't get that one now, and Keenan Allen won it last year. However, we can get best, we can get MVP and best quarterback here and check those off too. Caleb had a phenomenal season, and he gets himself an MVP, which should mean he also gets best quarterback check those two off as well what a way to end it the only thing that could have topped it off is of course winning the super bowl getting a super bowl mvp and i'm gonna check out the squad right now before the super bowl because i think this man's gonna retire and keenan allen has been phenomenal for us i did not expect to be having him for all throughout this video i thought he was gonna either leave or i wasn't gonna resign him but man first year he came out the gaze hot 97 receptions almost 1600 yards 16 touchdowns year two had a little bit of a slump and then year three onwards just absolute demon bro 20 touchdowns in two of them too a super bowl mvp as well it's safe to say that trade is one of the biggest fleeces of the last century everybody thought it was just a cap casualty he's old now but look at what he's done onto this team and look at the progression and the help that he gave to of course the qb1 caleb williams who's now up to a 99 overall his statistics all around just unbelievable he's the number one run number one ranked quarterback in the league and it's safe to say he lived up to the hype came into the league as advertised as in his rookie season broke broke all sorts of records in terms of yards and touchdowns for a rookie quarterback and he i don't know what happened in year two that was a little slump but in year three he really oh we were terrible this year remember i think we missed the playoffs too but year three found his footing again him and keenan allen hooked I was going to say hooked up. They found their connection and chemistry again. Worked on worked on it in the offseason. And in his final year, 51 touchdowns and a league MVP. DeAndre Swift was also amazing throughout this entire video. We put up some monstrous numbers. Same with DJ Moore, Kenvin Middlebrook. Shout out to him. I didn't even see Earl Reed. I totally forgot about him when I was in the game. I should have thrown him in. He would have been a demon in the end zone, no doubt. Of course, we had Troy Franklin here before, too. He was all right. Jamie Tyson was um, an underrated story in this uh, video. 85 overall star dev now pretty much put up similar numbers to Cole Komet, but came at a way, way cheaper price. Offensive line. Not bad. We got Mylotta pretty early on. Tevin Jenkins has developed into an 88 now. Swan, we drafted Sylvie. Same with Mason. These guys are all all right. But of course, the main man himself, the superstar fullback, Mike Sloan. I wish I could have got him a touchdown. That would have really been the cherry on top, but uh, still can't believe I got him. And defensively, it looks like Jared Hale went up to superstar X Factor. That is pretty cool. This defense was honestly really awesome throughout this entire video. I think Montez Sweat went up to superstar two, maybe. Lotu came out as a superstar. Mabry. I think came out a superstar. Actually, I don't remember. He may have been a star. Kobe Turner, we traded for, and he was actually, he paid off. He did. As the Cowboys end up going all the way, beating the Ravens 24-17. MVP is Micah. Bro, is Keenan still here? 
as he really doesn't want to leave us down to an 84 overall now and i don't blame him he's playing some of his best ball and he's putting up monstrous numbers year in year out but we'll leave it off there on the goat himself keenan allen if you guys made it to this point of the video appreciate you a lot of course leave a like if you made it because i'm assuming you enjoyed that would help the video my channel out a ton and just boosting it in the algorithm too these videos take a long time to make so if you were still here that would mean the world and of course subscribe to the channel if you want more franchise content like this we're trying to hit 50k so i can't do that without you that would be greatly appreciated but that's gonna be the end of me very successful review what i'd say we got a lot of things checked off on the checklist besides super bowl mvp i believe so just that one but you know what it went to keenan allen i'd want it no other way as it seems like the chicago bears have finally and i mean finally <laughs> got their franchise quarterback in caleb williams see you